I do feel the need to clarify something at this point, because a lot of people commented on our shorts just saying giraffe, like it was some kind of gotcha. This is a giraffe. This is a brontosaurus. This is a diplodocus. Giraffes and sauropods are dealing with some of the same physiological challenges, but can you see how sauropods might be at an entirely different magnitude? The largest giraffes are males 10 or more years old. They're approaching two tons. A two-ton apatosaurus isn't even half of adult length, and it's something like a tenth of its adult mass. It hasn't grown quite so rapidly as the giraffe has, but it didn't have a head start, you know, spending 15 months in the womb. It's probably like 12 or 13 when it reached this size. And yet, look how much more skeleton it has, and how much more it still has to make. Not to belabor the point, but building out your skeleton gets exponentially costlier as you get larger and larger, unless you can leverage your air sacs. Giraffes are the reason that I say that a tidally breathing sauropod would have unrealistic energy requirements. Giraffes mitigate the dead space problem by narrowing their trachea, which means that the volume is reduced because it's just a smaller circumference. But if you've ever tried to breathe through a coffee stirrer or something like that, you know that you have to work a lot harder to get the same volume of air in and out. Giraffes have these long elastic fibers in their lungs, which mean that they naturally contract to push the air out, and they can immediately start inhaling, reach maximum inhale rate faster, and take a longer inhale. They take like two to three seconds to inhale, as opposed to less than two for the exhale. Giraffes can afford to do this because they are eutherians. We run hot, but we burn a lot of energy to do it. Sauropods, while certainly higher metabolic level than other reptiles, were still lower than a giraffe. 